Alright, welcome back handy men and women. We are powering through these uh, how much to charge videos today. So, once again, right off the bat, in case individuals are watching just one or two of these and not all of them, just a few disclaimers. Number one, I'm not telling you to do work you're not licensed for. If you need a license, don't do the work unless you have the license. Just want to make that super clear from the beginning. Number two, when I started doing these, when I, or rather when I started my business, uh, what I noticed was when I went to try to look for information on how much to charge, every answer was, well, it depends, or the answer was, you shouldn't be in this industry if you don't know. Well, that's not helpful. I'm trying to be helpful here today, so I'm going to give you numbers, which is what you're looking for. Then, with a the caveat, you will need to adjust these numbers for your demographics, and that's going to be a matter of just playing around with them. Start out a little bit lower bump them up over time when you meet resistance bump them back down wait a little while after some time passes try bumping them up again if you meet resistance bump them back down if you do that all the time with all your jobs and you keep track of it you'll always be charging right up near the top of the acceptable window for those jobs number three this is labor only i'm only telling you what i would be charging for the labor the materials will be what they will be and finally, this is for one-off jobs. A lot of these would cost less if they're done in conjunction with other jobs at the same address. You've got to get that trip fee covered first, but most of these fall under the trip fee. So keep in mind, you're not, if you have five things on this list at one house, you're not going to charge this full price for each item for all five. You're going to be charging much less because you got your trip fee taken care of already. So today we are doing drywall so for drywall as far as uh, how much you charge as always you're generally shooting for a hundred bucks an hour you don't want to be making less than that although it's okay to make less than that every now and then because you do make up for it on other jobs where you're making more so general patch and paint this is when a tenant moves out and you need to go through and get the whole house ready for the next tenant with the patch and paint that's a pretty solid hundred dollars an hour uh, when you do a few of them you're gonna get an idea how long it's gonna take you and you're gonna charge about a hundred dollars an hour for whatever you think it's gonna take you to do that now something else I do with my business especially with patch and paints or anything requiring matching paint but especially on move outs if the paint is already at the site that's great test it right away put a very thin find a well-lit area not direct sunlight not in the shade but just a generally well-lit area. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. And you want to put just a little bit on the wall, nice and thin, and come back about 10 minutes later. It'll be dry enough to tell if it's a good match. You want to match the sheen and the color. So, $100 an hour for the patch and paints. However, if I have to go get new paint, that means I have to cut out a chunk of sheetrock from the wall or shave it from somewhere else. But I'm always going to want the best sample I can get. There are ways to get samples where it's not in an obvious spot and you don't remove a lot of material. But your best samples are going to come from semi-obvious spots and you do need to remove more material than you might want to in order to have a really great match for the matching people to match it off of. All right, $100 an hour for that and you just got to figure out how long it's going to take you. There could be a thousand holes in the house or there could be five. Number two, we're going to kind of start small and get bigger. Dense and small holes, and by small holes, I mean smaller than a quarter. Not not even really the size of a quarter, but the size of a quarter at most or smaller. I patch those and paint them if there's matching paint already on site for $150. i am going to tell you real quick how I do these because that, say, a quarter is not quite big enough to really hold all your mud in there. It's going to want to fall through the back. Keep your paint stir sticks, right? And when you have your paint stir sticks... This isn't perfect. You're not using the stir stick to be some, for, some form of structure. But you can get it up into that hole and behind the wall and then drive a screw in on the top and the bottom just enough to barely hold it. Again, you don't need it to stay held. It doesn't need to be super secure. All you're trying to do with this is get some kind of backer there so that when you put that mud in, if it's the right consistency and it doesn't flow out, it's going to stick and stay. So for those, I do 150 if the matching paint's on site. Next is quarter-sized holes to fist-sized holes. And when I say fist size, I kind of mean a little smaller than a fist. If it was a large fist and it was a full fist-sized hole, you'd be bumping this up a little bit. 
but for something bigger than a quarter, smaller than a fist, I'm usually looking at 250. And the reason I'm looking at 250 for that is because you generally, if it's if it's about the size of a fist, you're probably not going to need to tape that. You are going to need to watch a video that I'm going to make on how I do those in in such a way that they don't need tape. But you don't necessarily have to tape those. But you are going to have to put a little work into the texture matching. So for those, I generally kind of like the stir stick, except now I want it to actually be pretty damn solid. I'm going to take like a 3 inch wide strip of half inch plywood, which I've always got on hand because of the sink bottoms I do. And I'm going to stick that behind there and I'm going to use a couple screws to hold that real firm. It ain't going anywhere. And then you do your patch inside of that up against that backer board and you shouldn't need any tape. Typically. I knock those out in about an hour and a half and I charge $250. Maybe two hours at the most, but again, I'm charging $250 and my materials are almost zero. So you're still at over $100 an hour there. Let's see. From fist size to what I call plumber special size. Plumber special is what I name the job where you're going behind the plumber because the plumber had to fix a leak. He had to cut open the wall to fix it. Generally, that holds gonna be in the ballpark of 12 by 12. The good ones will make you a real small one that's almost fist size. The bad ones will go you know, 16 by 16. But when I say plumber special, I'm kind of talking about fist size up to about a square foot, not much bigger than that. Now when I do those, the price jumps up quite a bit more. The work doesn't change a whole lot, but it's 350 to 450. And when I say that, keep in mind, it can be more. I'm giving you sort of numbers that you don't want to go below. That doesn't mean that you can't go above them. Depending on the size, that, that could be a $600 job. Depending on the texture, if it's a really nice house up in the foothills and you need to do a great job, then it can get very expensive. But 350 to 450 for something that's, you know, let's say 8 by 8 inches, 9 by 9, 10 by 10. And the reason for that, that, that bigger jump here that we're going to is because you're going to need to tape these. They are going to be able to, to wiggle around enough for the cracks to show through. So those are now going to require tape, which is going to require skim, and then the skim's going to have to dry, and then you're going to have to texture. However, if you're charging 450 for that, even that is like a three-hour job, and a more complicated one is a four-hour job. So again, you're staying over that $100 an hour, and again, your materials are still next to nothing. Now, plumber special and up anything bigger than that because sometimes these plumbers sometimes have to take out huge sections like three feet by three feet once you get above about a square foot your prices need to start going up a lot one main reason for that is that's not a job that most handymen want to take on because most handymen are no good at texture practice your texture guys practice it literally buy a sheet of four by eight sheetrock bring it home lean it up against your house and literally knock holes in it and practice these. You can get super fast at it and they become very, very lucrative. There's a lot of patches I do that are 350 and the reason they're 350 is that's the maintenance limit with my companies. With most companies, it's gonna be that the property manager can approve anything under 350 and the homeowner has to be contacted for approval over 350. So there's a lot that I just stick right there at 350. In fact, what I'll do is my invoice will say like, 368 and then I'll put a discount of $18 to bring it down to 350 so they don't think that I'm bumping it up to 350 but there's a lot of times where I'm at a place for an hour and a half two hours charging 350 bucks for a basic fist size or slightly above hole um, so those get expensive it's hard to tell you exactly how much but I would say let's say that it's three feet by three feet which is something common to what you'll see if there's a bathtub backed up against the wall and you're on the other side of that wall and they needed to cut out and expose the entire back end of that bathtub. Something like that. I've commonly, commonly, commonly been 900 plus on those. And again, that's because good luck to that property manager finding a good, reliable, solid drywall guy that they can count on. If you're a handyman who can do that kind of drywall work, you've now become their handyman and their drywall guy. So, you know, 500 minimum on those if it's 20 inches by 20 inches but the bigger you get the more it costs and you're looking at probably 900 for them three feet by three feet or bigger ones and these are on your vertical walls right not your ceilings now 
Uh, let's see. Okay, there's so here's a small exception to the rule here. I often give a discount if it's a patch that's going to be done like in a closet behind where a bunch of clothes go. I'm still going to do a good job, but on those, if they specifically are on a budget and they ask you to keep it as affordable as you can, there's not many patches that you can't do like a semi-satisfactory job of for like 200 bucks. That's your call, but I do like to do some favors every now and then because they don't forget those favors. When they have a cheap homeowner or a homeowner that's just super concerned about money because this particular job, this particular move out got expensive on all fronts, that's a favor you can do them. And you know, you might think like, oh, I'm not going to short myself. Well, if you make $300 less than you could have, but you also cut your workload in half, so it's not like you work e worked extra without getting the 300 but you gain that loyalty, I'm telling you, long run, not that you should do favors to gain loyalty, but when you see those opportunities to really help them out with something like that, they don't forget it. You become their guy long term. All right, ceilings, anything on a ceiling, ceiling collapses. Now, if it's a plumber special in a ceiling, just treat that like anything else. But when you have a leak in the roof and it comes down and bows that ceiling down and you now need to cut out drywall and you need to match that up, I'm going to tell you something that you won't know unless you get the experience at it. Because that drywall was wet, even if it looks flat from standing on the floor, it has bowed some amount. When you go to put the new stuff in there, number one, you're going to have to cut out more than you think you're going to have to cut out because the drywall near those edges, even where, where it looks like it's not bowed anymore, that drywall there got very wet and it's not going to hold screws and stuff well and it is bowed the slightest bit but enough that it'll be noticeable when you go put your patch in there and you don't have a nice clean even seam all the way around so for those I'm never ever ever for the smallest one if it's 8 inches by 8 inches I'm never gonna be under 650 if it was caused by a leak also a tip for upselling on these if it was caused by a leak and they're worried about mold, let them know that you'll inspect and everything, but that whether you find mold or not, let them know that you're going to spray fungicide on all affected areas up inside the ceiling. They appreciate that. I don't know how necessary it is, but it seems to alleviate their concerns. I usually add about 100 bucks for that, and all you do is just spray some fungicide in there. It takes you like five minutes and you just made an extra 100 bucks if they want it. Don't go pushing on them if they're not asking for it. They know a salesperson when they see one, and they don't want to be sold. They just want solid work. And last but not least for drywall, y'all may not come across this in much of the country. I think most of the country doesn't do this, although I could be wrong. But what I'm going to say is here in Arizona, they do this thing where they like to put drywall on porch ceilings, like outdoor patios and porches, the ceiling is gonna be drywall. I have no clue why every single house I work on, and I mean every single one that has drywall on the ceiling outside has tape. All of the seams, the tape is starting to loosen up and come down. I typically charge 650 for every single one of those, and the reason I charge 650 is no matter how much it is, no matter if it's every seam on that entire porch, I'm gonna get that done in a day, and I like to make $600 a day. If it's one seam, I'm going to get it done in a day. If it's eight seams, I'm going to get it done in a day. You can use hot mud, number one. You don't need to make it look absolutely perfect because it's outside and it's up above and nobody's going to be looking at it. And then you're going to paint the whole thing with flat paint so any imperfections are not going to glare at you when there's light reflecting off of it. So I try to keep those right around six or seven hundred dollars. The property managers, once I did the first one or two that were really bad that they couldn't help but notice, once I did those, they started looking for them at every move out. They would take a look at the ceiling and if they saw any tape coming off, they would let me know. I would add it to the bid. They know it's always going to be like 650 bucks. They're very comfortable with it and it becomes this extra bread and butter that they just pile on top of all the other yummy stuff in those jobs. So. I believe that's about it for drywall. Uh, I will say, just generally speaking, learn to texture. This is not price related, but if you can become a great drywall guy, when you start working for these property management companies, look at the walls in every house you go in. These houses have been rentals for a long time, and you will see the patches everywhere. 
They're generally disgusting. Most handymen do not get themselves skilled at this job. Get yourself skilled at it because there is a lot of money in it. I mean a lot. And the reason there's a lot is there's not very... The supply of people who can do the work is much lower than the demand of the work needing to be done. So you can charge a premium for this and you can be badass at it and you can really impress some people and have some very good job stability. And that's about it for the drywall. There's not a whole lot more to do. We'll maybe do another one later on on installing new drywall or replacing entire ceilings and things like that. But for just what you're going to receive from property managers, this is about it. Thanks for joining in again. I hope y'all are out there killing it. Y'all have a great day.